Hello guys, in this video I want to demonstrate to you a new package, Laravel package called Laravel Request Analytics, which is a local version of Google Analytics or something similar to show you a dashboard something like this. From the data that is stored in the database, locally something like this. And in this video I will show you not only how package works, but also in the second part of this video we will dive into the code of that package, which you may use as ideas to learn from in your Laravel application. So we may treat that dashboard as a controller. It will use a lot of things like services, trades, DTOs, middleware. Also, I will show you a few tricks with carbon, with carbon interval as well, and more stuff. So this video is kind of two-in-one package review and then code review of that package. What can we learn from the code? Enough of the intro, let's dive in. So first, how the package works, I will demonstrate it in action. So after the installation, which is very easy, just compose a require and it has installation kind of mini wizard, but basically under the hood is just publishing migrations. You need to run migrate and you should also publish the config where you can choose some values to change in the future or from the very beginning. Also a few assets to publish, but that is optional. Now, when you do that, then you can go to slash analytics and see the dashboard like this. To enable the dashboard access in the config request analytics file, you need to change the middleware web to, for example, auth or whatever you want to allow here. This dashboard page is basically all that the package offers with the chart of visitors and views per day, bounce rate, and a few more statistics options like pages, browsers, operating systems, and so on. For that to show, I asked AI to generate the seeder with a thousand records with various random stuff. So in the database, it looks like this. A few of those entries are manual from my own testing, but a lot of others are generated from the seeder. So basically, if I go to any page dashboard, this is a starter kit, live wire starter kit in this case, I navigate through other pages, including the new two-factor authentication. Not sure if you're aware, but in all Laravel starter kits, they added two-factor auth function recently. So anyway, then in the database, if we refresh, we have new records for all of my pages visited. And then on the analytics dashboard, we see 26 views for today, which is mostly for my manual testing. So basically that's all the package does. It saves the data in the database and then shows some data grouped. And you may use it actually just for capturing the data. And we will discuss a bit later how it is done with middleware. But then from here, from the database table, you may build your own reports or pages or something outside of this package, not necessarily on the same analytics. But also in terms of functionality, you may read the readme is pretty long. So there are functions like pruning data for cleanup. Also, there is stuff like bot detection, like IP address filtering, geolocation services where you can use something like MaxMind or other third party services with their API keys. I guess the best way to analyze the functionality is to look again at the config file. So you can configure the table where to save the data, the route, the rules what to capture, web or API or bots, the middlewares, then you can enable queue and we'll talk about that in a minute when analyzing the code, then some paths to ignore. And also, as you can see, settings for geolocation services, including API keys and license keys by external providers. So yeah, that's the package functionality. Now in the second part of this video, let's analyze the code, which we can learn from quite a lot as Laravel developers. So let's take a look inside of vendor folder and in the vendor we have that package folder and inside we have source and this can be treated as a Laravel mini application just packaged as a package. So there are routes, routes web, the route of that analytics which points to a controller. Inside of that controller we have a typical kind of Laravel controller like you would have that in the page outside of the package. There's show method, you get the data from the request, you call the service and you return the blade view. So let's treat that as Laravel application, not as a package. And let's see what interesting things I found inside. And side note, by the way, I've switched from cursor to VS code in this part of this video, because I was trying to use cloud code inside of VS code. So I'm constantly jumping between editors. I hope you don't mind. But if you see any difference for yourself, what is better for you to view the code? Let me know which is better. The first part of the video's cursor. And now we will dive into VS code. 
So anyway, the first thing I want to show you is set of services inside of that package or inside of that application. So in the controller first, in the constructor, there's one service type hinted. This technique is called constructor property promotion, appeared in PHP 8. And here we have service to get the dashboard data. This is kind of a global parent service for analytics dashboard, but then inside it has another service in constructor. So this is exactly what I wanted to point out. It's a service within a service and dashboard analytics service will call the methods from this analytics service, which is in constructor. So this is how you may want to structure services in your Laravel applications. So in this main dashboard analytics service, as you can see, this analytics service, this analytics service and other methods. And I personally like the separation of concerns in this case, because here it is readable, get dashboard data. And from methods name, I understand what they do, what is their purpose and what is the result and sometimes parameters, but I don't see how they do that. So that implementation is in a separate service. So it's easy to read that code. And now let's dive deeper and see what's inside of that analytics service, which is much more detailed. So in here we have public function get date range, which is called in the dashboard analytics service as the main first function. And then that date range is reused in other functions. And also similarly query is kind of the base function, get base query from that analytic service, which should be on top here. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But as you can see, two functions to get the variables, which are then reused many more times. So query is here passed as a parameter in seven or eight functions. Again, good separation of concerns, in my opinion, then how it works with base query. So this is a database query with eloquent model request analytics. And this is the same base query. Well, it's called base query for any kind of dashboard or widget or graph or chart. And then on top of that base query, there are conditions depending on what you want to get from that query browsers, data, operating systems, devices, and stuff like that. So in each of those methods, for example, get summary, we have the query passed as a parameter, but then it is cloned to another variable. And then further eloquent operations are performed with that cloned variable. So this is get summary, for example, another example is get chart data, again, clone query, and then add additional things like select, group by order by and others. And also not sure if you noticed that clone thing is also used not only on the query, but also on date range start. What is that clone allowing us to do? So basically, if you put any operations like carbon or query on the original variable, then it changes the original variable as well, which would be bad for other functions that would be called on the same initial parameter. So that's why in every function it is cloned and then the original variable value stays the same and the cloned variable becomes what is important for that specific function. Also from this analytic service, you may learn some carbon tricks. For example, did you know that you can parse carbon and then some methods like start of day, end of day. Also, there's a function diff in days, difference between start date and end date with days. Also, you can chain methods like this. So sub days and then again, start of day, which changes the time part to 0000, zero, zero, zero hours, minutes and seconds. And then end of day changes the time to 23, 59, 59. So then the actual query becomes from start date first second to end date last second, which is exactly how daily analytics should work. Also, there's an interesting function called format time with carbon. So from seconds difference, it's transforming to a human friendly value with carbon interval. So not sure if you're aware, there's a carbon interval class in carbon. So I want to briefly show you how it works. And I copy pasted that code into a website, laravelplayground.com. And this is the result. For example, one, two, three seconds becomes human friendly two minutes and three seconds. If you, for example, remove cascade and execute, the result is just seconds. But now this is more human. Or for example, if we comment out short true, the example result will be longer minutes and seconds and minimum unit second. If we comment that out, then it also adds minutes and seconds before now. 
So yeah, if you just have the time difference in seconds or minutes, you can create carbon interval and play around with how exactly do you want to return that and transform into a human friendly text. Another interesting thing I wanted to show you is raw queries depending on database driver. So for example, in the function in the same service get top refers, there's a function get domain expression. And this is how it looks like. It requires raw query from the database, but the syntax is different depending on database driver. So by default, Laravel supports MySQL, PostgreSQL, SQLite, and SQL Server from what I remember, and MariaDB as well. And you can get the active driver from the config by calling this DB connection get driver name. And then depending on that driver, you may add some string to your query. This is exactly how it works in this case. And another similar function, get duration expression, which is also different syntax for different database driver. And I also like in this case as well, the separation of concerns. So expressions are added as separate functions. So the main function doesn't really know how exactly it is implemented. It just calls where that was. Yep, here we go. Get domain expression is just a function called without really knowing how that expression is resolved. Good separation of concerns again. And then finally, in this video, I want to show you how the data is captured into the database. So it's not about analytics dashboard. It's about how data is taken from the request. And this is happening in the middleware. So there's a middleware called web request capture. And also there's very similar API request capture because you can enable the tracking separately. And then inside of that middleware, there's a function terminate. Not sure if you're aware, but middleware can have not only the handle method, which happens before the web page is actually loaded, but also after the page is loaded, there's terminable middleware. And this is exactly the point of this package. It needs to log the data after everything is served. So if something goes wrong, then the user wouldn't even feel the difference. And now what is happening inside of that terminate? This is important to understand the concept of DTO, data transfer object. The request has quite a lot of data, this is complex data and it needs to be validated up to some standard. And let's see how it's done. So there's this capture function, which is taken into a trait because it is used in both middlewares, web middleware and API middleware. We have use capture request, which is a concern, which is another fancy word for trait. And inside we have the function capture. Then it checks the configuration of what should be ignored or skipped. And then we have prepare request data. And this is where we built our DTO. So we get the data from the request, from response, from user agents, from geolocation service and stuff like that. And then the result is return new request data DTO. That DTO is again a fancy word of a simple PHP class, which just has strict structure, what should be inside, what are the types of variables. So it's kind of array on steroid with strict structure. So if, for example, something is missing from here, then the DTO creation would fail. And then in the middleware, this capture is returned. And then if it's not instance of request data DTO, then something fails and try catch would throw an exception. And then the point of that DTO is that it is transferred then to later processing wherever that processing happens. In this case, it may or may not be in the queue. Process data is a job. And inside of that job, the parameter to that job is request data DTO. So everywhere that request is then processed, that strict structure ensures that the data comes and goes in that format, which is much better than passing an array or regular object or many variables. So this is the purpose of data transfer objects. If you want to know more, I have a separate tutorial on Laravel daily about DTOs and value objects. And I will link that one in the description below. So you may take a look yourself with more examples. But if we get back and dive deeper into that queued job, it passes the DTO, which then is passed to the service request analytics service to capture the data into the database. And also another advantage of using DTOs is that you can have autocomplete with values with specific keys from that object. 
and then the data is saved into the database like this. So yeah, with this code review or code analysis, if you will, I wanted to show you various parts of the same package, but you can also, as I said, treat it as Laravel application, and you may use some of those ideas from that application in your projects. So let's discuss in the comments, what have you learned? What would you have done differently maybe? Or what topic should I dive into more deeper in the future videos? And finally, if you want to find out more useful Laravel packages on our Laravel daily com in resources, there's a page called best Laravel packages, more than 200 packages by category with links, GitHub stars and descriptions. So you may take a look what you may use in your Laravel projects. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.